All right, guys. So this one, uh, this one's a little lengthier. This one is a more in-depth uh, training video for the video editors. It goes through a three-phase system of how to create micro content using video, going from the macro long-form content and creating micro content for uh, Instagram, Snapchat, and whatever social platform that you want to share it on. Uh, super in-depth, 30-minute training. This is what I teach the, our video editors. This is the system and how we create massive amounts of video content that we can share on Instagram and other platforms, you know, from months and months and months. It's perfect for when clients don't have content to share with us for that month and we have a library to pull from and we have so many different varieties uh you know the whole point for each piece of micro content is to make it feel as if it were the first time the audience were seeing it you want your audience to feel refreshed when they see the remix it's almost you know almost like when you hear a remix of the original song it feels new even though you know it's the same All right, what's going on guys? Today I'm gonna to be teaching you guys an in-depth content creation strategy that we are doing in Vision Paradox. Uh, it's gonna be a lot more in-depth, a lot more of an in-depth training compared to the uh, micro content strategy training that I previously previously gave you guys. Uh, it's gonna be covering not only the stuff you already know in terms of the render formats, um, the different types of micro content we make. It goes way deeper in the different in different types of phases that you that we can use to really maximize the content that we are given and the content that we can create uh, and this is something that i've been doing personally for my own content so that way i maximize you know everything that i create and document so um, if i happen to not have a good piece of content that i want to share i have something in the library because uh, that's slightly remixed from the original one and it's just refreshing uh, to the people who may have seen something similar to it or the new audience or for the p new followers that I may have on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube. Okay, that's the whole point is to be able to maximize the content that you have. So what you're going to be learning today, this is kind of cool, I don't know if it's distracting. We're going to be learning why we create content like this, the different terms that we use, okay, the different deliverables and formats. Okay, uh, terms is important because I want you guys to be able to understand uh, when I give you guys uh, specific tasks or, or lists of deliverables to make, I want you guys to be able to understand where I'm coming from without any confusion. Okay, uh, next is what makes good content. So we want to make sure the content we produce is really, really good. Okay, documenting versus creating. Okay, uh, what is macro content? The different and what is micro content we'll be getting into all this uh as we go along in the training uh how to create macro content Cr uh, we're going to touch base on this on a little bit because this is the more often common way people do things they create videos and they put together the video which ends up being like two three minutes so that's you know everyone can hire a video editor and put together macro content so how to create micro content there's different uh methods of doing that and uh, we really want to extract and really maximize uh, the micro content that we have. Why we're doing this is because we want to maximize all the content, like I just said, uh, all the content given to us for multiple uses. This is this is not just for Instagram, but this is for also for upcoming platforms like Musically, uh, using uh, extracting audio that we that way we can potentially use that as a soundbite or a voiceover for another video. There's so many ways we can create different types of content uh, instead of just doing the normal. Here's the footage, put it together, and that's it. This allows us to have a massive library of content to pull from whenever there's little to no content available. There are going to be some times when uh, clients don't provide us new stuff to work with or we don't film with them, and we want to make sure that we have something to work with. Uh, say we have multiple forms of, say, for example, a wedding event. Okay, If we make two, three, four, five different one-minute versions of that two hour not even two hours oh in an, an entire day wedding event okay it'll you can probably share it once when it's done and uh, then you can use the third version of the highlight half a year from now then you can use the fourth version of the highlight a year from now the caption and the context and the use for it will be will change over time but it's not going to be the same exact content it'll still be something fun and 
useful. That, that, that way we're kind of repurposing everything that we're given. It's through the strategy that we can create a month to an entire year's worth of content prepped and scheduled. This is one of the questions I got, like, what if, you're, if, you're, uh, if your content's already scheduled, don't you want to talk about like topical things like, I don't know, National Donut Day or Christmas? That's the benefit of having content scheduled is that if you forget, if you don't have anything to share, it's already done for you. The topical things like Christmas, Black Friday, or Halloween, you know, summer, you can layer that on top of what's already scheduled. Okay, that's just the beauty of it. It's done for you automatically. You have a huge mass, you have a huge library of it. You schedule it, and then things you just want to share for fun, add it whenever you want. It takes the part of having to think of I have to schedule this to build my brand that it takes that kind of stress out. Anyways, that's a little bit. Uh, that's going down another route in terms of training for the social media managers, actually. Anyways, so again, it gives me an oppor- gives us a way to schedule things way ahead of time. So this is for my own personal stuff, since I'm going to be using a lot of my stuff as an example. I am the guinea pig of a lot of the stuff that we do for Vision Paradox. I want to make sure when we implement it with our clients, I want to make sure that it's actually been tested uh, through myself first. That way I can get the results and then from there implement it on them. So that way it's not based on theory or it's not just a hypothesis. It actually has some data and evidence for us to be able to do it. And because of this, you know, I've been, I'm scheduled, currently scheduled until November for uh, Facebook. And it's currently August right now. Uh, November on face on sorry YouTube and October in Facebook and middle of September on Instagram. And I'm actually still producing in the middle of producing content. I'm aiming to have it done at least up until what maybe next March. And I have a massive amount of content that I'm still putting together and scheduling. Thanks to the team of uh, the, the team of video editors putting it together. If you, guys are, if you guys are watching this, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. This is this training is especially is specifically for you. But I'm also making this training available for everyone on the internet to see. So yeah, I'm scheduled way ahead of uh, way ahead of. Uh, time that way my social channels are taken care of with valuable content anyways uh, the different terms macro content that's anything that's one plus minutes this stuff is meant for youtube facebook vimeo if you guys use that it can be a vlog a tutorial highlight video interview it's essentially long form content one minute and on you know a movie that kind of stuff. Micro content is anything from, I should put this as 10 for Snapchat, but I generally put 30 to 59 seconds meant for all platforms. Uh, this is a little bit flexible on that. As long as it's meeting a certain standard of storytelling, educating, empowering, entertaining, we can share it for all platforms because you don't want to share like a random 30 seconds of nothing on YouTube because I personally, you know, it, I think it's, cool because you know random cat videos work and everything but for me my personal brand i don't i prefer not to just post random nothingness on there unless it has a point of leading them to something bigger like a 30 second freestyle video leading to uh you know leading them to a tutorial or leading to them a compilation video of freestyles so for me a lot of the content has to have an intent and a purpose that you know, plays into the bigger picture of what you're trying to accomplish. So this is going to be a highlight video, snippet video. I'll tell you guys the difference as we go deeper into the training. Uh, Insta story or Snapchat video. So which is pretty much either one of these. Snip down to 10 seconds made for Instagram stories or Snap. Screen grabs, which is pretty much, you know, getting the images with the best shot composition uh, from that video. That's why we like, I prefer doing video because at any moment you're not only capturing the audio you're capturing the video and if you happen to do and if you have a really good f- photographic eye you can capture a really powerful moment which can then become uh an image that you can share on instagram or facebook or let use it as an as an ad okay and then audio this is pretty much full two minute audio as well this is so inconvenient and a 10 20 30 second sound bite. So this is pretty much you know the entire like interview which can be like a can then be formatted as a a podcast or if you have like a 10 20 30 second rant of you i don't know talking about shoes or talking about something insanely powerful and inspiring you can then use that same sound bite as a voiceover for a highlight video i get get really in depth in creating and remixing and mashing up 
content from you know different parts of content that you have in your library yeah you can get pretty crazy and you can get pretty creative in how you can put all this content together especially once you have a really massive library up um, it's just up to you how you want to go with it so the different types of deliverables so this is for you guys the video editors um, macro content render at h264 at 10 megabits per second with max rendering quality on um, file size limitations none micro content h264 at whatever megabits per second that'll as long as it's under 30 mega uh, megabytes with max running quality on okay you're good to go because we only pulled the program that we use uh, only allows for uh, 30 megabytes as max Instagram snapchat story formatted um, this is what's currently working for me I know uh, um, there is research for one minute Snapchat videos now currently for me. I, I'm on Android. I still don't have that feature. At least I don't see it. Uh, the resolution is 540 by 960. And you, you want to try to keep it under 2 megabytes. Uh, otherwise, it just doesn't really work that well. Based At least uh, in my personal experience. Because either way, it's still going to be compressed. But uh, trying to keep it uh, as close to how the actual Snapchat videos are actually saved out uh, onto your phone. Next up is screen grabs. You can use uh, just save the photo straight from Premiere or yeah, preferably from Premiere. And audio render out as nine one ninety two kilobytes per second. MP three. Uh, I know there's the whole wave thing, but I'm trying to save space here. And we're not we don't need to we're not getting that fancy with the audio. So what makes good content? Okay, uh, I'm not instead of telling you what it is. I put together a series of questions to ask yourself that if you answer these yes for all of these, you've pretty much hit the checklist of making good content. So answering these questions, does it tell a story? You know, it doesn't necessarily have to have a beginning, middle, and end within those one within that one minute. You know, ideally that would be awesome, but does it tell a story about your brand, about who you are, about what you're trying to sell? You know, does it tell a story about you? Okay, if it's just for five seconds of randomness. 10 seconds of randomness. I personally wouldn't put it up, but that's just me. This is the strategy we're putting together that we're implementing. So like some people, uh, according one of our clients uh, is very meme heavy at this, but that's because part of their client brand profile we, that we have filled them out. They're, want, they're meant to be fun and fun loving and happy and humorous. So memes work out. If you are, you know, kind of a life coach, inspirational quotes might just work better for you or if you happen to find some sort of inspirational slash humorous kind of meme, that'll work better. But if it's like you see a meme that's really just talking down about other people, then you'll you probably see that a lot. You know, probably not going to be good for you to post. And you probably know that already. Next is the three E's. Does it empower, educate, or entertain? A little typo right there. But as it doesn't have to necessarily hit all these threes empower educate or entertain okay does it inspire people like quotes does it educate people is it a tutorial is it does it tell people about a special deal you have does it entertain is it like a dance video is it uh, a skit it has it has to be either one of these and bonus if you can do all three okay is it brand compliant you know uh, is it accord is it compliant to your mission is it consistent with the design idea you have typography you know uh this is this is a little bit more on the branding and making sure that you have you know is it according to your values you know your words this is a little bit more on for our end in the agency making sure that we're working with different clients we don't want to end up creating content that is completely different from how the customer already views and experiences them next do, is does it capture the first five seconds of the viewer this is if it's video or does it even capture the attention like take a look at the your own patterns of what you're doing through instagram the news feed what causes you to stop and watch stop and look at the image okay because more than likely you guys are just uh, scrolling up pretty fast so what is the thing that captures your attention and try to emulate and duplicate that so with these four questions, it gives us a guideline. And this means all content has to answer these questions before it's rendered and produced. You can have like a rough edit on Premiere or at Sony Acid, not Acid, Sony Vegas if you want. But ultimately, before you even put it out there, is it providing value to the world? Is it providing value to your audience? Documenting versus creating. I love doing both. 
probably documenting is actually like sixty percent uh, versus to creating. Um, documenting is when you are just propping your, grabbing your camera and just filming everything you can. It's very uh, much like vlogging and documenting. You're just grabbing your camera, filming as you go, uh, and doesn't it doesn't look perfect? It, there's no lighting. Uh, nothing is perfect. It's very raw and real, and uh, there's no pre-production. There's no planning. You just do it. And the thing I like about that is that there's no having to spend time to plan something out. You just grab and go, and you can create multiple forms of content within a short time. And the thing is, the content has to be good. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it still has to be good. Okay. And the cons of this is that you could end up reviewing like within two hours. You can you you'll have a lot of uh, footage. Uh, to review and sometimes there's going to be a lot of boring moments while reviewing it. Examples, as I said, vlogging and doc documentaries. But an added thing to that is that when you're documenting something, you never know. If you've ever asked yourself a moment where like, ah, oh, damn, we should have filmed that. That's exactly why I strongly recommend, doc uh, recommend documenting because you never know what you're going to capture. Creating, on the other hand, involves a planning process. Um, it allows you to create high quality content. Examples, music videos, and movies. They have a lot of time spent in pre-production. Scripts, uh, casting, table reads, uh, getting the crew together. So for for you as the individual, it's, I don't know, planning out the types of videos you want to create, doing some keyword research, um, I don't know, getting the right camera or collaborating the right interviewer. It's a lot of things that you have to take into consideration before creating it. And the thing I like about it is that it does create high quality content and you can produce a decent amount of uh, micro content and a great place for high quality screen grabs because everything is planned. But the thing with that is that you spend a lot of time uh, with pre-production. It, it can depend. Some people are just really fast with pre-production. Uh, but more often than not, people end up spending a lot more time with pre-production and with a lot of that just to produce, you know, a two, three minute uh, piece of content. The amount of micro content that you can create from there is not as vast compared to documenting. And again, it depends on you as the individual uh, in what you want to do. These are just these are just the two different ways we do it. We document or create. There's actually examples, you know, there's actually a way to do a mix of both but you know that's for another time so what is macro content I, as i explained one to two minutes of content that educates empowers or entertains your audience these length of videos are perfect for facebook and youtube so aka vlogs full length tutorials you know highlight videos it's very much like the highlight micro content but again longer than a minute so macro content for example a movie allows us to create micro content a trailer or uh, 30 second teaser which ultimately the call to action that we want for people to do is to spend money to go watch the movie so micro con macro content is the full length thing and we use the micro content to give a little teaser of the bigger picture okay so for us for a, one of our clients it can be a vlog uh, that allows us to create a highlight uh, a highlight piece of content or snippet and again I'll go into details of the difference between a highlight content and a snippet piece of micro content and ultimately we want them to go to a call to action which is uh, watch the macro content go to the site buy tickets buy the product so everything works together so how to make macro content this is pretty straightforward you just give the footage to a video editor take the footage and put it all together <laughs> as that edit the footage given by the client a vlog music video highlight videos uh, create a highlight video from a recent client film shoot longer than a minute two minutes so uh, again create it to, uh, to build and give value educate entertain empower and mash up or you, you can mash up all the old footage from the content library so we have a client uh, called show off dolls we have content from them back from 2013 and we've been mashing up their content from that year to uh, from 2015 and 16 and on. The purpose of that video was to kind of create a throwback moment and an opportunity for us to shout out some of the old members and to sh just showcase the growth of the team uh, to the audience. So what is micro content? It's 30 to 59 seconds, again, of content that educates, empowers, or entertains the audience. And these, are, these length of videos are perfect for all platforms. Again, can't be boring. 
okay? And these examples are gonna be in the slides that you can download, okay? Highlights of an event, snippets of a tutorial, okay? Highlights of a moment in the vlog, snippets of a performance. So you notice that I'm kind of using the words highlight and snippets uh, a lot. Uh, I'm gonna get into explaining that, I think right now. The types of uh, content we do, snippets are, say we have a 10 minute vlog. A snippet is a 30 to 59 second vi video of a really cool moment in the vlog or a really cool moment in the footage you have. A highlight is a 39 to 59 second mashup of all the cool moments, you know, that you can find in the beginning, middle, uh, quarter to the end, and the end, and mash it all together. The other type of format we do is Insta Story and Snapchat formatted, and the last is audio. Again, all content must answer the questions before it is rendered and produced. So how to create uh, micro content snippets. Say this is the full video. You know, uh, it can be uh, just say, for example, it's a movie. Okay, this is, you, you've seen it on Facebook where they share the first minute of a movie. You can do exactly that. So for you guys, the editors, aim to create five to ten pieces of micro content uh, snippets for each client. So think of the questions. Don't just render 10 seconds of random nothing. I know I'm saying that, but I really want you guys to get that. Not just random. It has to really tell the story about who the client is. Say these these colored bricks right here are the different snippets you have. Okay, 30 seconds here, 59 seconds here, I don't know, 20 seconds here. From As long as it's entertaining and meets and answers all the questions, you've created different micro content that you can probably share uh, this week, next week, next month, three months from now. You have something to work with, uh, especially when you uh, that contributes to your content library especially when you have on those days that you have nothing new to share so how to make micro content highlights okay, okay so this is where you pick the best best uh moments of the macro content these can last from five seconds to 30 seconds okay just get the really fun eye-catching moments and put them together and add you know obviously add a really cool track with it okay so key thing best moments not random tells a story Remember the questions, beating that, uh, beating it at home. Okay, aim to make five to ten pieces of micro content. Oh, for, sorry, that's not meant to be there. Anyways, I'll actually be telling you guys how much of each content to create in another slide. Um, it might be a little different from the previous slide. I forgot to ed edit that. So, anyways, notice now that I have an audio piece, things are going to get crazy, crazy creative, complex, fun. So, say full video and say the original audio. So, Audio meaning the music track in this case. Okay, so you have moments A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, all different varying in lengths. Okay, check out some examples. This is where you can switch it up. You can make with the original song, the audio one is the original song. We can make moments A, B, C, D, or F, C, H, or C, D, A, G. It's all from the same video, same content, different order has to tell the story using the same song okay F G H C D A G okay and I call that all phase one of the highlights all the you know same highlight moments or same moments in different orders using the same song phase two goes into as you can start now start seeing it's getting a little more creative just I you can do this for uh, I've picked up the top here in FGH, this too, as an example. You can get these same moments and add a different music track, add a different music track. Same with this, add a different music track, add a different music track. Imagine how much more content, say now imagine you did this for every single uh, piece of uh, micro content you created from phase one and you do it to phase three. You have a lot more content to share. It can feel redundant because it's the same thing, but the thing you wanna keep in mind is that not everyone in, that follows you sees the content at the same time and I, like a piece of content I shared today I've shared at least three times within the past probably six to eight months and people still receive it well it's just the delivery and the execution and if it's just really good why not keep sharing it it's good that you, you film and create new content but it's another thing to really maximize the content you have uh, so it's not just a one-time thing which is what a lot of people do they create content and they use it once and then that's it why let a really awesome piece of video 
just die out after one shot. Just keep sharing it. Just do it differently. So now moving on to phase three, though. Okay, this is where we get a little bit more interesting. Uh, those audio things, we those audio uh, renders that I told you about, like those 10, 20, 30 second rants, we can now start adding that. So this goes right into just this top level right here. Okay, for ABC, for this ABCD uh, highlight video we have here, we can have these these three versions of the videos. And have a sound bout, a sound bite. Say some, it's something inspirational about, I don't know, getting off your butt and taking action. You can have that right here. Sound bite one, sound bite two, uh, sound bite, sound bite one, mixed up with audio one, two, and three. You have another. You have you now have another piece, uh, another form of content. Same thing, remixed a little bit more. Now we have another sound bite here, talking about the importance of being grateful. Okay, you now have that with another with audio two, three, and one. Okay, so and and now imagine these applied to all this. You you have a massive, massive library of micro content from one video. I mean, do you see how powerful that can be in creating content for you or creating content for the clients? I mean, if we're really ambitious. We can create content for a good three months to six months off to based off, you know, four to five hours of filming. But we don't necessarily need to go through all these phases. I'm just showing you the example of how creative we can get from doing highlight videos. So here's a little quick thing of creating highlight videos from old content. Say you have a library. We, we use all, all, all our stuff as you guys have seen, uh, talking to the editors, as you guys have seen uh, in Google Drive. So you'll see different libraries, performance, music videos, behind the scenes, rehearsals. You can do the same thing here. Mix it all up. Get, uh, get moments from rehearsals, performances, uh, and throw in an audio track. Same thing here different order, audio track, add a sound bite. Okay. And you can just pretty much take it through the phases of, uh, through here. Just, you don't necessarily have to have new footage. Just use what you currently have. So how many highlight videos and how many snippet videos? Uh, snippet videos are only uh, applicable when there's new footage. Okay. And all you need to do is max is a max five snippets from the new footage. Okay, that gives us, you know, a good amount to just use as teasers on Instagram or on Facebook. Highlights from the new footage. Preferably, this is what I would like. Four phase one edits, three phase two edits, and three phase three edits. And weekly, when there's no new footage to work with, five highlight videos using any of the phases from the library. That way, you know, we're not, you know, twiddling our thumbs waiting for new content to come in. We're, t we're being on offense and creating something for the client for them to use and for us to curate. So screen grabs, this is pretty easy for, uh, especially on Premiere, uh, capture the best moments uh, with the best shot compositions in the footage that you have. Uh, the screen grabs have to be visually pleasing and has to tell the story. If, if you look on Instagram and, and or think of see photographers and their shots, that's pretty much the moment that you got to get. It can't just be a random like, you know, random shot that has no shot composition. It has to be good. So again, this can be just a simple, pretty much using the same example from the highlights. You know, best moment here, best moment here, best image here, best image here. You're using moment and image interchangeably. And how many screen grabs do I want you guys to do? 20 to 30 from each new batch of footage that we receive. Unless you've never edited before, on the, the content has never been through this part of cr the content creation phase. For example, the client gives us some old piece of footage that we've never filmed and there's no screen grabs, we can do that. So yeah, a total of 20 to 30 uh, total screen grabs from each batch of footage. So yeah, this is, and this, from here, it's going to be passed down to the graphic designer who's going to create their, the content through their own three-phase process. So this is just creating content on content on content, you know, with, using a little, you know, very little time. So Instagram, Snapchat, pretty much get the best highlights uh, and snippets and produce five to ten second, five to ten Instagram stories. So you, do, you don't necessarily have to make all of 
the micro content, uh, all the snippets and highlights into Instagram stories. Just pick the ones that you believe are best, are the the best ones, and I'm you know leaving that for you guys to judge on which one's really good. You guys got to convert these 30 to 59 second videos and create some multiple 10 second clips. So for example, if you guys remember the micro content, the snippets, we're gonna go one and three, and then these two random highlights. Okay, since it's a 30 second snippet, we're gonna do three 10 second renders of these based off the format I give you, which you guys can use as, which you can use this, uh, the slides here as reference. Okay, same thing here, 45 second snippet, Instagram slash Snapchat rendered, and one five second. So you guys get the idea. Audio content, uh, Pretty much just pick the most thought-provoking, insightful, inspirational, practical portion of the audio uh, of the content. So it just ha it, since it's audio, it has to uh, be something useful that we can use as, an, as a voiceover. Say soundbite one right here is talking about being motivational. This one is practical advice, uh, and so on and so forth. So, so you get you just pretty much ex export those sound bites as separate pieces of. Uh, separate pieces of content uh, and put into the appropriate delivers, deliver, deliverables folder and that's pretty much sound bites that we can use for the highlights. So are, are you starting to see that how we can intermix uh, a lot of this content together to create something completely new? I, does it seem pretty cool right? So moving on so this is another example say we have I, it's me interviewing someone it's straight up 20 minutes okay same thing most thought-provoking parts, inspirational exports, and then since it's an interview, export the interview audio itself, since we would be able to use that as podcast audio that we can put on Stitcher or iTunes, and you just create another piece of content based off, you know, a uh, video interview you've made with, uh, that you had with someone. And it doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, a 30-minute podcast. It can be a good, you know, 10 minutes, at, as long as the content is good. So overall deliverables are one to two full videos, which is pretty much the macro content, uh, vlogs, two minute highlights, interviews, whatever is on whatever is on the list of tasks for you to do, five snippets, 10 highlight videos, five to 10 Insta stories, 10 to 30 screen grabs, and as many sound bites as you can grab because we don't know how many moments there are of actually thought provoking inspirational stuff. Okay, and that should be a total, about a total, of 60 pieces of content that's about two months worth of content from one shoot or from one go around okay so again are you starting to see how how we can really maximize the content for our clients or for yourself that way you can really have some dope stuff to share on your social so things to remember not not a whole lot because you can always reference this video and reference the the slides okay answer the questions prior to rendering it okay if you have a rough edit answer the questions okay and make sure to create a variety of content for the social media managers this is exactly why I created the phases so that way the social media managers can take a look at the content library and see the events or the shoot days and they can see in the deliverables folder the different types of things that they can use uh, in promotion or in the content curation that they are doing. With that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your guys' time. Uh, let me know if you guys got any questions, if I missed something, or if you, there's something that you want me to go into more detail about. I, I'll be more than glad to help you guys out. Other than that, appreciate you guys, and I'll talk to you later.